Welcome back to Introduction to Computer Science at SSFS. In this unit, we're going to talk about animation with Pygame. And after its completion, you'll be able to do some actually really interesting two-dimensional games. But first, we're going to start out just by animating a single shape on the screen. And so what I've done here to save time is just to set up the bare bones skeleton of a program. I've done the imports, I initialized Pygame, I've created the main screen, a caption, set up some colors, and then the basic while true event. And then if I go ahead and run that, you get the plain, boring, gray window we're kind of used to seeing. So let's go ahead and animate a shape. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to create another surface. and I'll call it block pygame.surface. And I'm going to give it dimensions of 50 pixels by 50 pixels. And notice it needs to take a tuple. Uh, you can't just put the 50-50 the in there. The next thing I'm going to do is, you've, um, we've seen this before when we're dealing with fonts, but I'm going to put in a rect, and it's going to be block.getRect. And what this does is it basically gets the dimensions of the block surface and returns those coordinates. And then I can refer to the x, the y, uh, the left, the right, the bottom. You can check the Pygame documentation for all the different uh, coordinates you can access when you uh, get the rect of a surface. What's interesting is as you move these around the screen all the other coordinates update. So I don't have to update the left and right, I can just update one of them and the others will automatically change. Um, you'll see that that would be pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to do a block.fill to give it some color and I'll make it red. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, my initial speed. And for speed, all I mean is how many pixels the shape will move, the block will move etched every time the screen gets updated. So just for right now, I'm going to say that my speed in the x direction is 5 pixels, and my speed in the y direction is 3 pixels. And I'll kind of explain why I chose 5 and 3 um, later on. So that's the basic setup of my uh, block. It's a surface, I get the dimensions, I fill it with red, and I set my speed. So now, let's go down our Y loop. And let's talk for a second about most animation loops. So what happens uh, most of the time is I usually fill the screen with a background color. Or if I'm using a background image, I'll fill the screen with a background image. That, and that covers up anything that was underneath it. And then I move all my shapes. In this case, I'm just going to move my one shape. Then I update the screen. And it'll look like the shape has moved. It's kind of like a flip book that you may have used when you draw a shape on a piece of paper, then draw the shape in a slightly different position on the next sheet. And as you flip through it, it looks like it's moving. That's the same thing here, except I'm, I'm covering up the images, moving them, and then redrawing them. So let's see what that looks like. So still in my while loop, I'm going to fill the main surface with my background color, which will be white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the, the rect, whoops, uh, I'll move the top of it. However, since it's the top, it's going to be the, the y direction. So I'll move it whatever the speed in my y direction is. So if it started at zero, after the next time the screen updates, it'll be at position five in the uh, y direction. I'll do the same thing for the left, but I'll do it in the x direction. So I'm just moving the, the left three pixel, actually the left I'll be moving five pixels over and then three pixels down, which means that the, the block will have shifted a little bit. Like we did with the fonts, um, I've moved it. Now I'm going to redraw it on the screen, so I'm going to use the blit. So I'm going to blit it on the main surface. And if you remember, blit takes two parameters. One, the surface you're blitting, which in this case is the block, and the coordinates. And I'll just give it the rect, which contains the coordinates it needs. Finally, I'm going to update the display. Pygame.display.com 
update. And let's see what that looks like. Again, you fill it, you move it, you redraw it, update the screen, and then it's going to keep doing it. It'll fill with white, move it, and it should look like the block is moving. Let's go ahead and run that. And you can see I have a block that moves across the screen and out of sight, which means it's interesting for about two seconds and then it's gone. What would be far more interesting, let's run it again, is if I could actually get the block to bounce off the walls and stay on the screen. Well, it turns out that's pretty easy to do. Notice that we set my display window to be 500 by 500 pixels. So all we need to do is, after we move it, to see if it's still within that range. So I can do that with a couple of if statements. So if the block dot top is less than zero pixels. So that means if the top of the block has um, hit zero or the top of the window, or the block dot bottom is greater than 500, which is the height of the screen, all I need to do is reverse direction. And to reverse direction, I just need to change the sign of the speed. So speed y equals negative speed y. So that means instead of moving, when it starts out, it's the, the speed y is 3 pixels. That means each time it moves down 3 pixels, because y increases as it goes down. When the speed changes, that means the y direction is moving up, or the block is going up. So just by changing the sign, it should accomplish what I need. Now I can do the block dot left is less than zero, or the block dot right is greater than 500. Just change the sign of the x speed, negative speed x. So with those four lines, I should be able to bounce the rectangle or the square off the wall. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, I did something right. Ah, this should be rect. Sorry. Let me change that. So instead of the block, I need to change the, because rect is the um, variable that has the dimensions. And let's see. And now it bounces nicely around the screen. And just to show why I didn't do uh, 5 and 5 for the speed, because I have rectangular dimensions, it just goes back and forth and it's far less interesting. That's why I made the speed 3. Okay, so now you know how to animate a single shape and get it to bounce around the screen. Um, in the next video, we'll look at if we want to do the same thing to multiple shapes. And we're going to introduce a concept called sprites.